Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that we are starting the uh, Oakville Public Library Board meeting for Thursday, October 17th, 2024. Before we begin, I'm going to read our territorial acknowledgement. The Oakville Public Library is situated on the Treaty Number 14 and Treaty Number 22 treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. Oakville is currently home to many different First Nations, Inuit, and Metis peoples. Regardless of where we come from, we are all interconnected through the land that we live on, the water we use, and the air that we breathe. We are committed to a continuous learning journey and allyship. We seek to elevate Indigenous voices and lived experience to cultivate reconciliation in the town of Oakville. Uh, Madam Committee Clerk, do we have any regrets this evening? We have regrets from Councillor Chisholm and Andrew. Their loss, okay, moving on. Uh, any declarations of pecuniary interest to uh, declare? I'm not seeing any. We have our set of minutes from uh, th uh, the last board meeting on September 18th, 2024. Can I get a motion to dispose of those, Rod? What's your, mo you're moving to approve? Moving to approve. Seconded by? Thanks a lot, uh, I'm sorry. Sure, okay, I'm gonna take the seconder first. Rebecca is seconding and Meredith has a question or a comment. Just a quick comment. I had shared my regrets for the last meeting, but okay. it shows that I was present. Okay. You sure I you can correct here? that. You sure you weren't here? Not for the last board oh, okay. meeting. No. Okay. Okay. Was anybody here at the last meeting? Okay. Any further comments, questions, errors, or omissions? I see none all in favor of the approval of the minutes as amended. Thank you. That's carried. Uh, we have um, four items on the consent agenda. Number 5.1 is the Oakville Public Library Board key agenda items. 5.2 is a health and safety report. 5.3 is employee retention and turnover metrics report. And 5.4 is the intellectual freedom policy, uh, which we um, dealt with extensively in, uh, at a past meeting. Would anybody like to separate any of those items for discussion and comment? Not seeing any requests. Can I get a motion to approve those uh, minutes, please? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, uh, Meredith. All in favor? That is carried, or those are carried. We do not have any confidential consent items and we move on to our discussion agenda. We start with 7.1, which is the 2025 capital budget update. So just providing an update uh, on the capital budget submission to the town. Um, as part of the process, uh, we took the prioritization that was provided to us by the board um, and submitted our um, project cases to the town. Um, they all went to the town's um, executive leadership team for review and balance against all the other capital projects that went forward from the entire um, town. Um, and what you have before you is, is the result of that. So it's just a flag for you um, that we had brought forward, I think, five or six um, different possible projects for 2025, um, and they have been put in the 10-year forecast. Um, so the print uh, project is currently in the budget, slated for 2025. However, the others have been pushed out throughout the 10 years. Um, I will uh, flag that um, how they were distributed through the 10 years did not necessarily align with the prioritization that we had given them, um, but it's not a, a major issue. We can always review that as they align with the upcoming um, budgets years that they are assigned to, um, and that I would just flag also um, that the AI budget, uh, the AI project isn't in there, um, but I think Paul and I haven't necessarily had a chance to talk about it, that, um, but I, I suspect that that's because the town is currently doing a review of AI, and so it'll be how they all fit together. Comments or questions? I do not see any. Can I get a motion to receive the capital budget update for information, please? Thank you, um, Rebecca and Avis, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. Okay, 7.2 is the Parks, Recreation and Library Master Plan update. Yeah, so I have um, Steve Langlois back from Monteith Brown to kind of tie together um, the presentation that the board would have saw, I think it was back in July, May, oh, for the back, um, time is flying. Um, with, how they took the comments that were brought together, brought forward by the board. So I'm gonna pass it over to Steve to just review where we are with the plan, how those comments were incorporated and the path forward. Welcome and good evening. Thank you for your time this evening. I'll try to be a bit briefer than I was back in May. If everyone remembers that meeting, we outlined in pretty good detail the draft plan 
at that time. I want to focus on uh, what's changed since then and, and largely through the, the input received from the board, uh, city, uh, town council, and, and the community. Next slide, please. So just uh, to start off a bit about the plan, this has a 10-year planning cycle, but uh, a 20, really 30-year look ahead to, to 2051. Uh, with uh, the significant growth that's coming to the community. So focus really on capital projects over that span to make sure that we have the land and, and uh, the facilities that we need to continue to support growth moving forward. Next slide. The scope of the plan, and, and I'll be focusing on, on the library bits tonight, but we are also dealing with recreation facilities, services, parks, <coughs> uh, parkland, park facilities, and uh, as libraries, as mentioned. Next slide. The plan itself is built off of uh, a very extensive research and consultation phase over a, I think a year and a half of research and, and the community was, was well consulted throughout. Uh, I think the next slide, if I could, speaks to that consultation program. We had uh, surveys, we had open houses, we had stakeholder involvement. I'll point out the last plan there in green at the bottom, the last box there. Uh, that was our consultation over the summer where the, the, the full draft plan, the, the recommendations and actions were made available for public comment and, and we received over 1,600 responses and, and I'll uh, report on that shortly. Next slide. So going back to May uh, when, when we were here for that meeting to present the draft plan, some of the things that when we took, uh, the notes are a bit broader than just what's on the slide, but some of the key points of, of uh, reconsideration through the, the full plan itself were uh, really about service <coughs> delivery and, and um, community building in, in Midtown Oakville in particular. Uh, we discussed at, at some length library service to sort of two more localized pockets in, in your community being Bronte and uh, Clearview. And uh, there was some, there was mention of eBooks and, and certainly the challenges there. So uh, we took that input to heart and, and we're, what we're offering tonight is, is a few revisions to the directions there that are also supported by what we heard from the public. So the next four slides speak to, these are 11 statements just specific to libraries that were part of that uh, 1600 response um, survey that I mentioned uh, that took part over the summer. And, and these are fairly binary, agree, disagree, uh, some, some neutrality allowed here. Uh, if, if people didn't have an opinion, but overall public agreement to these statements was very high. It tended to range between, I think, 55 and about 80, 79 percent, and uh, public disagreement was quite low, uh, between uh, 3 and, and 12 percent. So that all suggests that we're on the right track uh, with, with uh, directions that were presented in the plan. It, it sort of presented in descending order um, of, of agreement. So strong agreement to, to a little bit lower, but support for flexible spaces, uh, for inter continued integration of libraries into other community and recreation facilities, and expanded technologies within your libraries. Next slide. Um, and approximately two out of three uh, residents uh, supported the need to look at an operating hours plan, make sure that continues to uh, meet with the needs of the community. And we, said we also talked about different library um, possible capital projects in different areas. And, and I would think if, if you're living closer to those areas, you would tend to be in a little bit more strong, strong agreement. Uh, but again, uh, really good support all around. In particular, we talked about uh, recommendation for Trafalgar Urban Core area um, um, south, which is actually, this is your Brant Haven development uh, that, that's starting to move forward. Um, so 67% uh, support there. We talked about additional uh, social services within libraries with, in partnership with others. Next slide. Um, continue to expand outreach, alternate s uh, service delivery models, uh, enhanced library services within the Bronte area, and, and I'll come back to some of these in a moment. Uh, Midtown was, was another statement that we tested as well. And the last slide on this, um, is around uh, growing diversity of enhancing multicultural uh, collections and support for uh, the redevelopment of, of Central Library. These were probably the two that had a little bit more, uh, more just neutrality. I think if, um, if, if people don't use these, these spaces or these services, they're, they're more than likely not to have an opinion on that. So all in all, very, very strong input to, to suggest that we're on the right track. Next slide. 
So just a reminder, back to the master plan, uh, you set a number of, of different uh, objectives uh, to highlight uh, what some of the priorities might be for library and related systems moving forward. We talked about the master plan talks about embracing evolving roles, expanding and revitalizing your branches, again, over, the, over a 30 year time frame, uh, providing new branches in strategic locations, um, and, and a lot of the other items that we, we had tested through the survey there. So I'll pull up and maybe spend a, a bit more time <coughs> on the next slide. This was the map. This has changed since, um, since uh, presented back uh, to the board in, um, in May, and a number of, uh, I'll point out really th those key changes in a moment. But as we look to 2051 and, and a population of around 443,000, we do know that um, growth in, in the library system is, is needed and it really results in, in a near doubling of, of library space. So uh, these eight projects, and there could be other ones that emerge out of this list. Some of them are, are requiring some additional consultation and, and research. Um, are really largely placed in order of priority, but as mentioned by Tara earlier, you know, capital programming can be uh, adjusted on an annual or, or, or semi-regular basis as well, depending on uh, funding and, and other needs. So replacement of Central Library, that's an ongoing initiative. A new library branch in uh, Trafalgar Urban Court South, that is also an ongoing initiative that's starting to take, uh, take, uh, take off a bit. Um, given what we heard from the community around Clearview, uh, what we heard from the community around Bronte, which were very different messages, I would say, um, uh, or mixed messages in, in both communities, doing a more detailed review on, on options. And, and in Bronte, if you recall, talked about uh, there's growth happening in Bronte Village, but there's also growth happening in, in the um, MTSA around the GO station there. And you know, what are the opportunities to deliver on those needs, whether that's at QE Park, for example, that was the initial recommendation, uh, probably requires a little bit more consultation with the community, uh, with the board and, and, uh, and others to determine that. But really putting uh, that and, and uh, how effective the, the library services in Clearview are uh, towards some additional study to happen within the near term. So that's item number three. Item number four is Palermo. That's been on the books for, for some time. That's a coordinated uh, initiative with uh, a transit hub and, and recreation services as well. So that will be um, a bit of a, a smaller scale facility. It's not a 16 mile, for example, uh, but something that offers service to, to that ward as well. Um, number five, Midtown Oakville. This is the one that uh, probably is, is the most significant change on this map since when we last met. And, and it, was, it was partly listening to the opinions of, of the board and, and the community and, and also working with the planning department to reflect on the fact that there's really, at this point, no public uh, community space gathering area uh, being uh, contemplated within uh, that Midtown community. So uh, we're now recommending something that'd be a, a more localized facility. We're calling it sort of a library and community hub. And what that means is it's, uh, it would have some form of, of traditional library service, but also have um, some more gathering spaces. Could be meeting rooms, um, could, could have study space, could involve other uh, service agencies that need to locate within that area. And this would be something uh, as we sort of, as that community starts to build out, um, would need to have its own study around governance structure and, um, and, and what that facility model would be. There's no land, there's no, you don't have uh, any sort of freehold arrangements there just yet. So this is sort of just planting a flag saying, hey, we wanna be providing some service in this area. We recognize Central Library is, is still probably a, uh, a bit of a bridge too far for, for, for serving that community. Uh, so that's something that's um, emerged as we finalize the document. And then items six, seven, and eight speak to longer term arrangements around uh, establishing a branch at River Oaks Community Center, uh, possibly expanding Glen Abbey. There's, there's some additional work that recreation will be doing around a revitalization of that community center and uh, something further to the north in Trafalgar Urban Court North, uh, closer to 2051. So two more slides, I think. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the, the plan also includes a, a series of actions related to more service delivery programming and so on. These remain largely as presented back on, on May 9th, so I, I won't cover that ground in any detail tonight. And then uh, really just to wrap up, I think the last slide there, uh, really wanted to express our thanks to the library board 
as you've, you've helped us navigate this process through uh, we had some, some online uh, virtual workshops. Uh, we, we've uh, met with many of you out at, at some of our public open houses and the guidance that you've provided in this forum has been very helpful for uh, crafting what I think is, is uh, a plan that really meets the, the needs of the town and the library moving forward uh, over this, uh, this 20 to 25 to 30 year um, uh, program. So uh, with that, I'd be pleased to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Questions from the board? Do you have anything? Rebecca? Or Meredith, I'm sorry. There's a lot of the in, um, changes that I think are, are really positive. I really um, love the addition of number five of, of calling out the Midtown as well. And I also think number six, um, adding a library branch in River Oaks Community Center is, is an excellent idea and a great um, neighborhood that could benefit from that. My only um, comment was about number three, and I think you verbally mentioned um, Queen Elizabeth Park, and I just wonder if that should be like called out as part of that sp like specific review of looking where, um, what would make sense there. And just the more I've thought about it since we've had that conversation in May, is that, you know, there could be some really good compliments of QEP CC as it stands right now, as a destination, as a cultural center, and that you know pairing already that foot traffic that exists, um, and to maybe investigate that as well, and maybe that is all part of that recommendation of number three. Thank you, and if I could, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say there's about 500 pages of text behind a lot of these <laughs> recommendations, and that that is absolutely we, we've identified. Uh, QEP uh, as uh, being a consideration in that it, it, it's a municipally controlled site. Uh, it, it does have the potential for synergies as well. Um, I probably also, I'm, I'm, this may be in the deck, but I didn't mention. So just in terms of our next steps, just so the board is, is aware, uh, we'll be bringing this in front of uh, the town council for a special meeting. It's actually November 5th. I think uh, that, that date's uh, changed a bit, but it'll be Tuesday, November 5th. So that's when we'll be seeking approval of it. The full plan itself, and, and there's, there's quite a few pages, but in that more detail, looks like it should be up online uh, on the project web page as early as next week. Thank you. Further questions? Bill. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I, I think it's a, a great document. I, I just had a question when I was looking at all those questions, the questionnaire, I guess, um, that everybody asked. Um, or answered. Um, I thought it was great, as you just said, about the very low percentages of uh, disagreed uh, folks. Um, but just from my own uh, interest, um, it just seems like there's a lot of neutral um, folks out there. And is that sort of a typical thing? And uh, where I guess people they just they just don't feel that they have enough information in their in their heads to um, to you know say either way. And is that just a typical thing, or is that unusual um, so uh, we the, the whole survey had about 30 different statements so about 10 library 10 parks 10 uh, recreation and, and we had probably some very similar um, splits that way and 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 if you think of some of these as neighborhood branches um, mm -hmm. you know, they're localized so if, mm -hmm. if, if, if you live in, in, in somewhere in, in the north you're probably not going to have a huge opinion about what's happening in Bronte to be honest yeah. So I think those were the ones where we saw the, the most amount of, of non-opinion. Uh, the survey did also collect information, uh, some open-ended commentary, and um, it was it, it was a bit all over the board. All, all over the board. We we do report on that in our in our reporting, but probably the biggest requests there were, were for expanded programming, which is what we heard through our initial survey last year as well. And again, that's very personal. Uh, the mm -hmm. type of programming that one one individual right. might want is, is different from others, but uh, the plan does provide some suggestions there. Um, so programming, library hours, and uh, quiet space were probably right. three of the bigger items, and, and that all it reinforces a lot of the trends and, and things that we had anticipated yeah. to hear. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. We don't like to be surprised when we put out these surveys, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Further questions? Rod? Yeah, 
I'd like to reflect what Meredith said. Uh, very pleased that you listened to us uh, for sure. The Midtown Oakville one is a couple of us spoke up on that. I just like to um, I've been a bit quiet about Woodside, which is my uh, closest branch in which I could practically roll out of bed and, and land in the in the place. Um, we're thinking about uh, a, a place uh, further west that will serve the Bronte area better. My only concern is that the people who've answered this survey, um, they're seeing something like review options and locations for enhanced library services within the Bronte area. And I hope in another year, if the plan is to go ahead with that, it should say, and that will include opening a new branch further west that's more central to Bronte and closing the Woodside so that the people actually understand what they are uh, responding about. Because um, I don't think people answering that question would, would realize that maybe a branch is being closed as part of that in order to open a, another one. Yeah, and, and what I would say to that is um, it, it does become important when you're, you're doing your messaging around what, you know, that, that study and, and just as we mentioned QE Park, Woodside gets wrapped into that. So if you think of a catchment area, and, and we tend to use around a two kilometer catchment area, and it's, it's not perfect in all areas, but it gives you an, a sense of, of um, uh, I'll go back, uh, when we had our survey last year, we talked about willingness to travel and, and that sort of thing. And, and most people will go, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes, depending on their form of, of transportation to, to access a library. And so that area needs a library. You have one at Woodside. Is it ideally located? I think that's debatable. Um, you know, so with the growth that's coming, unpacking that one a little bit more. Well, but, you know, absolutely a consideration is, is what happens to that site. And, and uh, again, it could be very personal for for the people that love those um, uh, love those spaces and um, paid parking and all of that, oh, that was probably the other comment that we heard is you know paid parking at Central, but I'm sure you're aware of that one uh, over the years as well. Yeah, I just think I think there'll be time for another survey, and maybe it needs to be specific on you know what the impact will be, and and as you say, it's it's uh, it's more centrally located for Bronte, and you've got your traveling thing, but. Anyway, there's, just wanted to make that point. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and what, what we'll do, because the board will be involved in that. So the, these are recommendations, we'll take the recommendation, but we will be the ones doing the review. Um, and so that would be a consultation that we would happen with the board as we undertake that and how we should frame it. Is it a closure? Is it a relocation um, of, of a branch? But what we're going out to review and what we're gonna look at and what the end results are, that, that'll definitely, the board will be engaged with that conversation. Thanks, Rod. Uh, further questions? Nothing from Avis or Meredith or Rebecca? <sighs> nope, okay. It's not the worst thing about it. No, I know. <laughs> it's a compliment for both of you. <laughs> yes, my no glass. I'll blame the gla loss of glasses. That's why we don't yeah. take selfies either. <laughs> yeah. um, twins separated at birth. Um, I have a couple questions. First of all, the library facilities uh, on that sh we've uh, reviewed on page 12, um, the River Oaks Community Center one's kind of a surprise to me, a, a pleasant surprise, because it's my constituency, but um, how, how did, did that just come up through dialogue with um, the people who participated, or was this something that was put in front of them? Um, it, I guess, like, it, like, where did it come from, I'm yeah, curious. It, it emerged from, uh, from two areas in particular. Uh, one is, is really reflecting on, on the geographic location of, of all, all municipal facilities. And River Oaks um, is, is a site that is, is close to growth that's happening along the Trafalgar Corridor, uh, the Dundas area as well. So uh, it fits with sort of a growth related uh, funding model perhaps. Uh, we heard from the public and, and reinforced through the survey as well that co-location is convenient. It's something that people are looking for. And thirdly, um, on the recreation side, uh, the plan talks about uh, strategic revitalization of, of, in particular, two key facilities being Glen Abbey first and then River Oaks as well. So looking at maybe some opportunity to replan some of the spaces internally and saying, hey, we, you know, there might be an opportunity for, for library space at this location. So there's been some preliminary 
uh, just super high level fit opportunities to say that, that that could be something that could be achieved on site. Interesting. And did was there any uh, commentary on the uh, or any uh, feedback on um, our White Oaks branch, which is very very close to River Oaks? Uh, nothing at any sort of statistical level. We we didn't include that as a statement. Uh, okay. We're aware that that's you know a, a bit of a different model w within your community and and serves a, a, a different range of, of users depending on the time of day. But we would anticipate uh, probably much like sort of the Woodside scenario um, when you're doing that planning for River Oaks and and this is going to be ten years yes. uh, down the road and chances are you'll have another master plan before that time that that maybe validates or or. Uh, considers that y you may wish to do a review of, of uh, White Oaks or, or other library systems within the vicinity to okay. see how effective they are at meeting needs. Um, the undertake, so number three, undertake review of library services in Bronte and Clearview may result in new branch in Bronte. I, I'm just curious about that statement. It didn't say a new branch in Clearview and Bronte, it just said new branch in, in Bronte. Was that as a result of the, is that just, uh, uh, wordsmithing, or was that actually uh, an outcome from the uh, consultation? Uh, the consultation we had, uh, and 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 I don't want to attribute it all to to yourself, Councillor Noel, because I know I know we had um, um, some participation from a number of board members and and other members of council, and, and I would say it was mirrored in the community as well. There were many that felt um, they need library service retained there. Um, there were others that thought it should be enhanced or others that maybe didn't feel like it was effective. So um, we, we don't love doing these plans and, and not we, we'd like to provide as many answers as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, this was one where I, I think um, there are definitely some local sensitivities. It's, it's a very localized uh, type of, of service and location there. And it, it is one that does deserve a deeper dive that, that uh, a town-wide plan just can't really get into. So. I guess the only thing I, I'm surprised, first of all, thanks for outing me. Um, <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, I'm just uh, curious why, uh, I, I guess I'm, it's, most, it's mostly the wording here. Um, and that's, you know, Bronte was particularly called out as a, as a potential new branch, but Clearview wasn't. Is that, was that intentional, accidental, or just as a, as a conclusion to the uh, research? Uh, well, with, with Bronte, um, that area with with, the, with some of the modest growth that's being anticipated again for for those two nodes, um, we had thought some additional space would be required. So th there's a growth related component to the Bronte review, um, whereas with Clearview, uh, the growth projections are, are, are it's, it's a very stable community. Okay. Um, so it would not necessarily be a new facility, but but you could very well, the review could very well consider a, a different type of space or a different model. Okay. Um, I just know that's going to be a trigger point for someone when it comes to council, so I just wanted to know a little bit in advance. Um, is this ranked? In order of, of timing, yes. Just timing, not in terms of uh, um, preference by uh, participants in the, in the research? Not necessarily. I think... Um, you know, we, we reflect on, on trying to maintain the, the library's uh, provision uh, level. So we know there's a certain amount of square footage that's going to be necessary to achieve that. And we want to do that in the most efficient way possible. And, and part of that is uh, expanding where we can and, and offering, um, you know, some other strategic locations to meet that need. In terms of branch locations, was there any burning um, uh, overall conclusion that you came to? One of the particular locations that that really resonated with people more than others. I'm just curious in terms of the, uh, uh, your feedback from the community in terms of who's really looking for another library or enhancement services, et cetera. Did, was anything like that concluded? Um, I mean, it's a challenge because some of these libraries in here are, are in areas that, that are, are not yet developed, right? True. So when we talk about Trafalgar Corridor or Midtown, uh, it, it becomes a little bit more of a, a planning argument and, and trying to, to decipher growth and, and that. Um, I mean, personally, I think we're really excited about the opportunity to um, re-envision some of your existing spaces, uh, whether it be Central, uh, whether it be Glen Abbey, and, and, and partly the library, but also the, the recreation right. side. These are, are tremendous flagships for, for, for the community. They're in great locations. 
um, um, you know, and, and, and most, many of them, Glen Abbey in particular, I know is, is your busiest library uh, throughout the day and, and the facility itself. So we see an, a great opportunity to breathe new life into those spaces. Thank you. Okay, members of the board. Oh, I, I knew if I stalled long enough, Avis would have a question. Avis, you have the floor. So it relates to actually to Appendix B. So I don't know if this is a question for you or for Tara. I was really just trying to understand Chart B, the library development charges projected balance, and how to like what 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 meaning to take from that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. There's nobody from finance here, but Paul can save me if, if he feels like it. Um, that is something that finance wanted us to include because it, it's basically um, to say that there's the plan and that we can use the plan, but there's also the finance piece attached to it and that every year as part of the capital, it needs to go through the budget process. Um, and there is a highlight that overall, um, our capital bucket will be stretched by the current plan. And so that is something we need to be aware of as we move forward, because there may need to be shifts in dates. So as the dates are projected into the 10-year forecast, layered on top of that is our um, capital budget, and those, will, those considerations need to happen in concurrence. Sorry, uh, Avis, can you pause for a second? I just want to maybe ask Paul if you can clarify this a little bit. Does this relate also to the change in the development charge regime in Ontario in terms of the uh, uh, access to capital? It is somewhat interrelated. Mm -hmm. However, this is really about time of collection and time of spending. Mm -hmm. So we're spending quicker than we're collecting. Okay. And so we do get into a negative balance in our development charges. At some point, if you were to drag this out, we start to catch up. And there will be changes in terms of the development charge policy that will correct some of that. But I think it's just finance's way of saying, this does put a pressure on the capital budget. And so it's reflecting that very visually for you. Thanks, Avis, for your, you have the floor again. No, I was just, uh, I think Paul has answered the question. I, I understand now. Thank you. Thanks. Anything further? Okay, I'm not seeing anything, so I'm going to look for a motion to, I believe this is a receive. Yes, it's a receive for information. Can I get that motion, please? Thank you, Rod, seconded by Bill. Thank you all in favor. That's Carrie. Thank you uh, to Monteith Brown for your hard work on this. I look forward to it being presented on U.S. election night at uh, town council. Oh, oh, is it? Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Which uh, could be a problem. Well, yeah. in November. <laughs> I didn't say it, American Insurrection Night. I said American Election Night. So we may have to place monitors in the in the council chambers. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it'll be a good distraction for us all to be in this meeting rather than home. Yeah, but the uh, politicians that serve on council all have like this is our Super Bowl. So I oh. mean, it's yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh, our next agenda item, which is uh, uh, 7.3, which is the OPL goals. Um, so every year, uh, I bring forward organizational goals for the upcoming year um, for feedback before we ask the board to approve them. Um, so this is what we've initially proposing as our organizational goals for 2025, um, looking for board to provide feedback on, on the overarching um, areas of focus, um, that have come forward and, and how we've identified some of our, of our metrics. Um, I will flag quickly two things. Um, one is under cardholder growth, um, number one has carried over from this year. Um, the board will remember that I think I reported, I think it was last month, um, that the tool that we purchased in order to do better online engagement and digital engagement did not deliver on what was promised. <coughs> um, and so we are going back out to market and hopefully we'll have a proper system in place in 2025 in order to be able to implement um, this piece. Um, additionally, um, under staff growth and engagement, um, the town will be undergoing a staff feedback, staff engagement survey, um, I believe in November, um, and that we are participating in that. So that goal is built off the results, which we would get close to the end of the year, early January, on that staff engagement survey um, that, that we would look to action based on two previous surveys that, that we've looked at, if that, if that makes sense. Questions, comments? Uh, Rebecca. Sort of related to what we just talked about. I love all these goals and 
I think we talked about this in our last meeting too, um, just the idea of maybe that we're spending more than we're getting or taking in. Would one of our goals be to look for ways that we can get more grants or funding or to fundraise or things like that? Just, you know, we talked about, you know, one of our projects being like even the printers and being able to make some mm -hmm. money. Um, is it possible that that's sort of a, maybe not a whole goal, but even under the capital budgets goal, just to explore ways that we can start to make some money to offset all this amazing growth that we're going to see over the next five, 10 years? Yeah, we could certainly it's something that we can take it back uh, and, and think about. I mean, libraries are quite limited in the ways that we can do revenue. Grants is a, is a great way. Um, and we can certainly you know, have a goal for application to grants, what we can't control is the receiving of the grants. And, and we really try and make sure that we're applying for grants where we know that we have very great services in, in place. And, and in fact, I didn't um, put in the report, but we did just get another grant from SITVAN um, to help support some, um, what are they called? multi-sensory spaces that we'll be looking to introduce in the library in 2025. Um, so we do take opportunities and absolutely we can look at something to here to try and report on how many grants we've applied for, um, if that's a piece. Um, and yeah, we do have the, the, the one million um, that we're hoping to raise for, for, for Central. So um, yeah, it's a good point. We'll consider it, yeah. Further? Sorry, Meredith? Thanks. Yeah, overall, I thought the goals were well thought out um, and definitely in favor of all of them. Just as I guess I've been just thinking about it more in the coinciding, the timing of 16 mile and the growth of card holders. And I was just thinking about like 5%, like does that, is that like an ambitious goal in light of the fact that we will be opening our doors and will that just naturally attract? Yeah. Is that really like, should we pat ourselves on the back for our marketing work when just like by nature of opening up a new facility will attract new or if so, but maybe it is and maybe it's just, op it's not a, if you build it, they will come kind of a thing and we do need some marketing yeah. help and that made me think about, um, you know, should, maybe as like a sub goal as once we open 16 mile to kind of have, you know, use that facility. Cause there's gonna be so many great facilities. How do we make sure that yeah. the, com it, the community it's there to serve is, is taking advantage of what's there? And maybe that's more complex than we know. No, absolutely. And I mean, what we might be able to do is, is to put in a touch point. Right now, 16 mile is targeted to open sometime in September, October um, in there. So we, we will have a good sense of, of hopefully where we are with the 5% before it opens. Um, and then it might be a good point, you know, knock on wood, maybe we're at 6% and then, you know, we're gonna up it to 10 by the end of the year because you're absolutely right. We're gonna open those doors and I would expect that we will see um, a significant bump in our card holders at that moment just because, you know, it's gonna be a big deal um, in, in, in that uh, community um, with that piece. Um, and yeah, and, and again, we're having conversations about I mean, it'll be in, in partnership with, oh, they left me. Um, <laughs> in partnership with the town um, for the opening of that facility to make it really big so that everybody in Ward 7, everybody in Oakville knows that it is happening and how do we get them through our doors and how do we make you know, that, that first week or, or month of, of opening really spectacular um, and really showcase hopefully every amazing thing that the library will have at that point um, that might be unique to 60 Mile in and of itself. As long as we have the money to run it. Yes. Sorry to bring everybody down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, further comments or questions? Okay. Um, I'm, I, I support everything in this report, and I'm wondering where our digitization project falls in terms of goals and whether or not we could be mentioning that to keep it front and center. We can absolutely consider a goal for, for the digitization piece. Um, it is waiting to go to RFP, it is with purchasing. Right. Um, and once that goes out, that, that, that piece is essentially, the digitization is covered under that. Um, so would you be looking for? Well, is it really though? Because we still have the open question about access and such. So, access So is, I, I, I'm just wondering like yeah. the overall project. Okay. I mean, I, I don't, it doesn't end when the technical no. piece is done. No. We still have the legal and access piece yeah. and everything. So I just think it's a, it's a, it's a, 
it's been a project that's been identified by this board and, yeah. and frankly by its support. Um, the council as well. It'd be good to track it and make sure okay. it, it remains front and center in terms of uh, uh, outstanding goals. It really is sort of our last vestige of, yeah. of securing, um, you know, the history of Oakville, and I think that's an important piece. Okay. All right. We'll put our thoughts together, <coughs> our heads together, to try and come up with a, an appropriate goal for that for next year. Thank you. Uh, go back out one more time for any more questions. Seeing none, can I get a motion to receive this item for feedback, please? Thank you, Avis. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. All in favor? That is carried. Uh, okay, next up is the collection development policy. Uh, yeah, so we're tackling some of the bigger policies in the fall. We had intellectual freedom, which was just approved early as part of the consent agenda. And now we're bringing forward the collection development policy. Um, so this one does have some significant updates to it, mostly to bring it into um, alignment with some changes with legislation, particularly around um, the film ratings, um, but also to help better clarify the process around reconsideration, make it clear about how we do collections, um, really resulting in some of the challenges that, that we've had come forward over the past year um, to kind of to clarify the role of the library, um, the reconsideration process, and, and, and those pieces. So happy to take questions. Uh, Rod, up first. Sure. Um, I love this document as a whole, but there was one part I had a question about, and it's on page uh, 5 of 11, deselection, and we've got an item that is the subject of a libel action, which the library becomes aware, will be, will be removed from the collection until the action is finally resolved. So I, 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 have, I think I have a few questions on this one, but can I just start with uh, one which is where is this coming from? Is there something going on in the library sector at other libraries, uh, this sort of thing? What kind of libel cases are we talking about? That sort of thing. <coughs> yeah. I don't know. Would you be comfortable in addressing that? Okay. Now, this is Julia um, morrison Duller. She is our manager of collections. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so in response to your question, I can't speak to the exact details of the libel case that prompted this edition. Um, however, there were a couple of situations over the past couple of years uh, relating to some materials that were distributed to libraries without the um, consent of the bodies or, or companies that produced the content. Um, so there, there were some, some controversies, and in, in one case, um, the organization actually brought um, the question directly to libraries regarding why and how they came to have those materials in their collections. I am speaking actually specifically of some audiovisual content. Um, and so a lot of libraries have added in language of this nature uh, to help them deal with that situation. It, it came in that particular instance somewhat out of the blue. Um, and the material was actually provided to libraries by our third party vendors whom we work with to source material on our behalf. So this language has been added as a way to provide us with some recourse should questions arise regarding the ownership or the um, appropriateness of the content uh, in, our, in our collections um, and to essentially give us a way to some time and the opportunity to investigate uh, those materials and determine the provenance or appropriateness of having them in the collection, whether they still meet the criteria outlined in our collection development policy. Thank you, that's an excellent answer and it's cleared up a lot of questions I had, but I think we should nevertheless consider language something like uh, will be considered for removal. Because when there's a lawsuit, it's uh, for example, a libel lawsuit which is referenced here, it's, it's an allegation until it's proven in court. To actually remove the items, holus bolus, as a policy, you could run the risk of withdrawing really good material that people need, and maybe it's a frivolous lawsuit, and it will be 
knocked off by the courts or whatever. It will be turned back. So I think we should be a little bit more careful in our wording, and I would advocate wording, like I've said, couched a bit, will be considered for removal. Also, yourselves and the other librarians who do collections, uh, do you also work on the reference desk, the service desk, or is it collections and that's it for you and your, your colleagues? Our, our selection librarians, uh, some of them, yes, do have um, responsibilities on the information desk, and that's a very important part of their job in terms it's of making sure they have that connection with our communities. Where I'm coming from here, though, it'd be very hard for you to know all over the world, because the library has material from all over the world, you know, maybe there's a libel case in Paraguay and that's where this book is from. You know, how would you keep on top of libel in the US, libel across Canada and so on? It'd be very difficult except for high profile cases. So that's why I, I think it would be better, given that you've all got other parts of your jobs to do and you're doing a great job, I think something like that that I've just recommended would be better. All right, thank you. Okay. Further comments or questions? Bill? For what it's worth, Rod, I totally agree with you. I was gonna say, make the same point, because it's, you're right, it could be, it could take stuff off the, the shelves for who knows how long for potentially frivolous lawsuits. And, but your other point is also well taken too. How do we know? you know, where, where in the world it could possibly be. Are we missing any? Anyway, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Further questions? Okay, I have one. Um, with respect to, uh, on page uh, 2 of 11, uh, access to collections, second paragraph, honoring the legal requirements of the Film Content Information Act. I know that you have, this isn't one of the changes, but I'm wondering if uh, that should be reviewed because the, uh, Film Content Information Act in Ontario has been changed dramatically. Uh, it no longer imposes uh, classifications. Um, I have a little bit of inside knowledge on this. Um, and it leaves the discretion to exhibitors. So there is no actual legal requirement to restrict uh, uh, film and game content under the former legislation. So I'm just wondering if there's a little bit extra wording that, that could be considered there. Um, also, uh, the one area where there's still um, voluntary enforcement um, in Ontario is over games and the rating on games. I know we have video games in our library branches. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there could be a specific reference to that because there are uh, games that are rated mature and the, uh, I can't remember the name of the organization that uh, um, addresses this, uh, but I know that there's some, um, uh, there's some voluntary compliance along with, um, um, amongst retailers and such about access to those particular video games. I'm wondering if you could do some work on that as well. No, absolutely, yep. Um, also, and I, I hate to raise this because I know it, it, it opens up um, what has been a bit of a painful chapter for us, but access to collections, and it, it does, and, and I, I subscribe to this fully, you know I support every access mm -hmm. of intellectual freedom policy. Although I'm just wondering, based on our past experience, um, we do, when we had the controversy around particular books available in the library, it, it was, it was uh, um, stated that librarians, and I accept this, librarians use good discretion when it comes to the placement of materials. Could there not be a statement around that there? I know there's, there's a very clear statement that uh, placement of materials is solely at discretion of the library, but could there not be a statement that um, for the sake of the public that are reading this, to understand that there would be, uh, uh, you know, common sense application of appropriateness for, I guess, the, the positioning of materials in the library. Yeah. I mean, we, we, do, we do cover that a little bit under selection criteria about how items are selection. selected. Okay. Yeah, I'm not talking about selection. I'm talking about the actual display of the materials. I don't want to restrict your selection. I'm not even trying to restrict your access. So you're talking about the display? I'm talking about the display or access accessibility um, of materials that would not be appropriate for certain ages. Right. Uh, I know we don't want to necessarily be arbiters of that, yeah. but when we had this conversation, and it, you, you recall it was quite a conversation, one of the responses from, I don't know if from you or somebody else, was that there is discretion used by the library staff as to where it's appropriate to place right. these materials. I'm just wondering if there could be a statement in there about that. Because okay. right now it, it seems that this is like, you know, everybody has access to everything and there's no conditions, so, you know, it's, I, I just think that, while, while I don't subscribe to the positions that were being 
uh, we were being uh, lobbied for or yeah. lobbied about, I do think that we left that on the basis of the fact that librarians would use discretion, particularly where they where they locate materials, not in the selection of materials, but where they locate materials so that there could be some degree of, of supervision. Yeah, there is, there is an, an internal evaluation. All books come with a recommendation yes. around age groups. Yes. Um, and some of those are very easy and some of them it really, especially preteens are, yes. are, are particularly challenging because an 11 year old, you can have all kinds of different 11 year olds reading yeah. all types of different of different levels. And so um, there is a certain level of, of discretion about where that kind of peaks in, what's a children's, what's a teen, what's an adult um, piece to that. So. Uh, It'd be, it'd be great yeah. if we could just have some wording to clarify what our... The appropriate placement yeah. pieces, yeah. That it's, I, I think the, what I'm looking for is wording that it's something that's considered. Right, okay. Uh, because right now, it, this, is re, this, is very, this is a very binary kind yeah. of policy, and it has to be because yeah. of intellectual freedom, I get that, but I do believe there's room for, just like there's room for that kind of thing in film entertainment and games, I think there's some discretion on the part, and you've said this in the past, that there's discretion on the part of the librarians as to where the material is placed. So really hiding the expertise and the education of, of, of librarians yes. in this area. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Yep. And, but not, not restricting our, right. our collections, because yes. we already, we have, yep. a, we have a conclusive policy on that. I just think that uh, we should walk our talk, because that's something we did talk about, is yep. that there, there is discretion used for that. Right. Okay. Kay. Those are my two pieces of feedback. Anything further? Mm. Anybody want to challenge me so we have a rousing debate? <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca? No, but I was going to add, to when we had that conversation, there was the idea that some books should be put behind like a, a curtain kind of thing and an X-rated section. So it's like a fine line <laughs> between, you know, consideration and restriction and so, I'll be very interested to see what the wording is that you put in. I'm not sure we have X-rated materials, but um, <laughs> but I think if yeah, somebody no, I, else deems them yeah. X-rated, and that's and that's and that's why I think speaking to it, yes, to be just a little more succinct may avoid some misunderstanding amongst the public, and and um, I think it's important to mention because yeah. we have had this conversation, and whether we didn't. Whether or not we agree with the extreme positions that were taken by that particular group, I think there were some shades of gray that we just need yeah. to be cognizant of. Okay. Yep. Uh, can I get a motion to, uh, this is receive as well, right? Yeah, receive for feedback because we'll see another iteration of this. Um, Rod and uh, Avis, thank you all in favor. That's carried. Okay, we're moving on to our library space booking policy. Uh, so this policy comes before you with, with relatively minor um, updates. Uh, really, I think the most significant piece is, is we updated to say complementary work and study spaces in order to provide clarity about what is a paid space and what isn't a paid space. Um, but beyond that, it was just clarification based on conversations that, that have come through regarding from the branch and customers. Great. Any feedback or comments to send back to uh, the team on this one? Not seeing any, I got a motion to uh, receive this item for information. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Rebecca. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, the, the policies can keep on rolling. So we're gonna move on to 7.6, which is membership <laughs> policy. Um, so this one is, is, is the same. We, we do um, have a review schedule for them. Um, and every time we do continue to, to clean them up um, a little bit, uh, we did do a significant update back in 2020, um, and as such, again, we just we just clarified a little bit. Once you've lived with it, um, to clean up some of the language, but overall, in essence, nothing has shifted. Any comments or questions? Uh, I just have one. So the the the, the nomenclature membership membership is effectively card holder. Yeah. Is um, is, is it, I, I just for absolute clarity so that people are saying, yeah, I'd like to buy a membership of the library, you know, or whatever. is it possible to maybe um, reflect that in the, in the title? Yep. Um, just for there's absolutely no uh, misunderstanding. Gotcha. That's my, uh, my amateur lawyer hat on. Any further comments or questions? Motion to receive for information, please. 
Thank you, Avis. Thank you, uh, uh, Meredith. All in favor? That's carried. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Uh, we have our mandatory learning policy. Um, so our mandatory learning policy, um, the board may recall that one of the, the goals for this year was to um, greatly grow our onboarding process, particularly for our customer experience staff, which makes up the majority of them. Um, so we're also taking the opportunity to update the mandatory learning policy to include more of these learnings um, and educational pieces that are now required for people to complete in order to provide clarity around expectations around completion, timeframes for completion, because um, there are a number of legal requirements, but also internal requirements that make up mandatory learning. So we just took the opportunity to update that to make that clear. Okay. Comments or questions on this one? Well, seeing any, can I get a motion to receive this one for feedback, please? Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Meredith. All in favor? That is carried. Okay, we have rounded the curve and we've passed the policy and we're at the junction of uh, board evaluations uh, on seven, or sorry, 7.8. Um, which is the board evaluation policy, um, but this oh, is the process. Well? Um, there is a board evaluation policy um, and so I am activating the board evaluation policy which speaks to a board evaluation happening in November. Um, so we, we passed this uh, and so I, I followed the, the policy in order to create um, a survey and I'm bringing it to you for feedback and then we will incorporate any feedback and then hopefully get it out to you in the next week um, which would then allow us to bring back um, the the results of that survey to the November board meeting to allow the board to have a conversation about their evaluation for the year 2024. Okay comments or questions? Bill. So I was just curious um, the, the second point here, you know, there's, there's a selection of three potential uh, ways to go. That, that one is different than all the rest of them. Rest of them. I just was wondering why, because the other ones are very effective, somewhat effective, not effective. This one is effective, needs improvement, not effective. And I just wondered why that was. Maybe I'm missing something. It, it, honestly, it's effective. probably because I was adjusting them and just missed adjusting one of them. Oh, okay. But we no can problem. definitely bring it into alignment with very <laughs> effective, somewhat effective, and not effective. I would feel so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody read their agenda. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Further comments or questions? Okay. As I do, I have a, a couple comments on this. So this is great. I love the fact that we're doing this. Um, uh, but I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to also add some uh, valuation aspects around the conduct of board meetings. Um, as a long-term chair, mm -hmm. I don't get a ton of feedback, except when Bill throws donuts at me, uh, but I don't, get a lot of, uh, I don't get a lot of feedback as a chair, and I don't know if, how you folks feel, uh, if you feel you're contributing um, effectively to the board. I'm wondering if there's, if there's a way we could evaluate our own performance, um, because I think that that's very constructive and useful. Uh, something I, I recently initiated at the uh, Halton Police Board, I have found it to be particularly useful. Uh, and I know my colleagues have as well. So I think something along those lines uh, might be helpful as well because the, 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 the ultimate um, manifestation of our involvement in the library is our board meeting. So mm -hmm. how they operate, are you feeling, like our board members feeling that their, their contributions are valued? Are you being heard? Are the meetings effective? Does the chair try to be funny too often or not enough. So there's, there's certain aspects of that one probably don't want to put on the agenda. But it's, it's, I think it's important to understand how the board sees the meetings, how you see yourselves, and, how, and for that matter, even how the staff prepare us for the meeting. Is there enough information, not enough information, too much information? Um, so I, just, I think from a good board governance perspective, we should take this opportunity to include that. That's my two cents. Are you going to give me a rating now, Bill? So, <laughs> yeah. Effect, was, I, was, I was, that, just, was that effective? I was looking, Very for, effective a, I was looking for a donut. But anyway, um, uh, so was it, it would be on the chair, not necessarily oh, it's all for, of us? For all, all of us. You. So it'd be, you know, oh. it, it's, I mean, you could actually drill down and each member could do assessments of themselves, like mm. for a 360 kind of thing. But I'm thinking more along the lines of, you know, um, it's, it, and it's not just impacting the chair, it's impacting all board members. So our... Is there adequate, like I'm just giving you throwing some, exa throwing some examples out here. Does, you know, is the level of discussion 
effective, very effective, needs improvement. Is the, is the, are the materials that are prepared for the board meeting um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, adequate, somewhat adequate, or not adequate? Like, it, it, I think it's things like that that speak to governance. Mm -hmm. um, because we are a governance board. We're not an advisory board, we're a governance board. And I think it's important to understand uh, and, and self-evaluate the quality from your perspectives of how governance works. I use the example of rating the chair, which I think is one piece. Um, but I think it's also rating yourselves, rating um, the uh, the preparation from you know from staff, uh, right down to the you know to, you know to the length of the meeting or or you know are we are we getting enough um, uh, you know information to support our decision making that sort of thing. Okay. Do you get a sense of what I'm I'm talking? Yeah. About? So I, I'm just going to clarify the themes of of the four questions and and, and I can figure out the wording. So one on um, basically resulting around the level of discussion. Mm -hmm. One related to um, the materials and how uh, well they serve to prepare the board and inform the board. Um, do people feel that their contribution to the board is, 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 is valued? Um, and then one around, a, a more personal one that, that you know I feel like I am an effective member of the board and I'm able to express myself, yeah. uh, something like that. Exactly, I think you've, you've, Those capt four? you've captured okay. what I'm trying to say very well. We've been working together so well, okay. uh, but I think there also should be one that basically talks about the chairmanship of the, okay. of the board too, to, to basically as, an, uh, I mean, as, the, as the chair, as the current chair of the board and, and other boards, I, I, it's always good to know if, if, I'm, if, I'm doing a good, if I'm doing a good job or speaking generically, if the chair is doing a good job, uh, or if there's uh, if there's concerns because if it comes back as somewhat effective, then it's going to certainly lead to a conversation, and and tears probably. And it, it and really the survey will give you the results, but it is really meant to prompt yes a broader discussion. It is. Yeah, um, so we will I will add those five. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then uh, send it out now probably mid next week um, <laughs> for for the board. To, I don't so want to just impose, keep an eye out for it. I don't want to impose this. Is that a consensus? Like, does everybody feel that that's a that's a good good contribution? Okay, Roger, you have a question. Yeah, um, I was on the committee that worked on this, and I may be completely misremembering, so please forgive me if I've got this wrong, but I thought we were thinking about when we do the evaluation at the November meeting, that I think we were thinking of going in camera because there's a question about how we work with you, an identifiable individual, mm -hmm. and we've just added at least one about how we work with Jeff, the chair, as an identifiable individual. So. Would this not be something that perhaps should be done in camera during that meeting? And that raises another question, which is this, I love this uh, survey, which is gonna give everybody uh, plenty of thoughts so they can come in here. Uh, they've got their, they've thought out their, uh, you know, where they stand on these things. But if they're sending it into the library and then we're talking about an identifiable individual again on that. Should we not just roll in to the meeting in November with our copy printed off or something or, or saved on our drive? Well, the, the survey wouldn't necessarily have names attached to it. We can do it for that it's anonymous. Um, in well, order to be able to, is that what you're asking? No, I mean, okay, maybe I'm missing, I'm not getting through. Okay, you're the, you're the CEO, so we're we're rating our um, how we work with you as part okay. of this, and and now we're adding something on on how we're working with Jeff, and I, I think you've got an, you've basically got an identifiable individual included in what we're looking at. Yeah, so I'm, I'd have to run that one by clerks, yeah. um, and not Jessica, unless you have thoughts, but Andrew, because it I think it does, I think that's a little gray. Yeah, I think it depends on the level of detail you're going to go into um, because everybody's entitled to have technically any kind of performance review in private. Whether you're a staff member or a board member, it is dealing with identifiable individuals. Um, I think if you make the survey so that it's really not specific with names, um, you could probably do public, but if you're going to put names in there, who said what about who or whatever, then I would say for sure in camera. But I think the question is, if we ask the question about the effectiveness of up the chair and Jeff is tied to the chair, does that then have to put it in camera? I think you can put it in camera. You have the justification to do so. Do you necessarily want to? Maybe not, but I think you can justify putting it in camera. Couldn't we leave it on a case by case basis, depending on? We on could do it and then, and then depending on how the conversation goes, we could always move in camera. 
due to the, um, I, I totally get where Rod's coming from. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't want to overcomplicate it though. That's what's the concern. Yeah. You could, you could, you could s separate those two in particular. Because I, I actually, Rod mentioned the the effectiveness of the relationship with the uh, CAO is the, or CEO. Is that in here? No, I think there is one. Oh, I'm sorry, there was, there was one. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, perhaps the the two that speak to individuals, uh, even though you're you're not naming somebody by name, when it's there's when there's one CEO and one chair, mm. then perhaps. Perhaps we could uh, provide that as a carve off, that those are dealt Just, with yeah. Uh, confidentially. Yeah, I mean it, it is. It is, and, and maybe I think it's it's different for the chair, but that isn't meant to be a performance review for me. No. It is really a conversation about the board and how the board interacts with me. Um, and I kind of see the question about the chair the same way. Yeah, it's about the effectiveness. It's not about whether you like the person that's in the chair. It's more along the lines of is the chair's is the chair's con the way the chair conducting the meeting. It does it meet your needs. Um, um, it helps, yeah, basically it helps the chair determine if they're doing, I, like I said, I don't get a ton of feedback, um, uh, which I, you know, I generally take as a good sign, but you know, you just, you don't know for sure. And if there's, and if it creates a conversation, if it comes back as somewhat effective, then you can, you know, it becomes a conversation, like what could we do better in order to make the meetings uh, uh, flow better, provide better outcomes, et cetera. So I personally don't have a problem with it because it's not, I don't think it's meant to be Depending on how it's worded, you know, I, I don't think it's meant to be a personal uh, attack. No, and, and, and Jessica just had a conversation, and so uh, you know, a good compromise may be that you know I can summarize the feedback, but that you know there's also a, a, a bit of an un or a unredacted response that can go in confidential, and then depending on how the conversation goes, we can move to that. Does that that make sense? Like I can summarize it into a high level yeah. to kind of highlight if there was. You know what's the lowest, what's the highest kind of piece to start a conversation, um, but that if people really want to get into, because there is there is one for open comments um, as part of this as as well, which I can put and include, but that would likely be better off in, in a confidential piece. That way, people would feel confident that what they put in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the commissioner has a solution for everything. Okay. Excellent. I don't know if it's a solution, but it is a recommendation to the board. And I would suggest that if you're having any discussions about personally identifiable individuals, you would move in camera. Right. If for transparency, you could then bring motions into open session and speak in general terms that aren't personally identifiable. That would just be good practice, and I think that would be uh, probably the best practice for the board to follow on this as a recommendation. Okay, well, we have two staff members that are now recommending that, so I think that, that I, I would be happy with carving those ones off. If, unless anybody has a suggestion otherwise. Okay. Yeah, if you could turn your microphone on. Um, I mean, one of those questions is, but the, the, the issue with that is that the, on speaking to that one, it's not about, it's not about individuals. I guess the point that's being made, and Rod makes a very good point, because that's how we conduct ourselves at council. Mm -hmm. um, if we're evaluating any, you know, anything that relates to somebody who can be identified, it's not, being an identifiable individual doesn't mean it says, Jeff is a good chair, it's, or is the chair a good chair? You know, it doesn't matter, because it's, 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 it's identifiable under the, under the um, practical implications of that question. So I, I, I'm fine with that, personally. Uh, as long as the board has, if we have consensus. Makes the logistics a little more difficult reporting out. We'll sort it out. Yeah, okay. Is there any further feedback to totally confuse the situation? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Meredith, you're up. I was just curious. I noticed who everything was on a three-point scale. Most of the, like, engagement surveys that I've seen are on a five-point scale, just it gives a little bit more nuance, and I was just wondering if there was any value to moving to a five-point versus the good four. I'll take good the board's four. feedback. Yeah. I'm moving from five to three, because if you put five, you actually don't get answers. Okay. Um, I, I struggle with it a little bit, and it's something we've been doing internally with, with five-point systems, is that people will take the most general and you actually don't get an answer. By forcing people into three, you're making them choose a side. It is a little bit harsher, but I feel like it provides more information. But if the board would prefer a five, I'm happy to do that. What's the current HR practice in the, the town and the library? Uh, like I said, in the library, we are switching to a three. You are switching to a three. Yes. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure what it is in, in the town. I suspect it's likely a five. 
I'm, I'm open. I'm, I, 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 I buy uh, the CEO's argument, but uh, I'm used to a five as well. Right, okay. Yeah. I'm not like attached to it. I was yeah. just, I just thought, we put it out in case anyone felt strongly about it. Yeah, okay. Well, how about a straw poll then, <laughs> an unbinding poll? Five or three, five? You put your hands up for three. Five? Wow. Okay, so it's three, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's a good call. I do every, everything I do is like every everyone I've ever done. It seems to be five. And I, you know what? Now that Tara mentions it, it is difficult because you're kind of like, eh, you know, what does that really mean? And then try to interpret it later. So maybe three does make some sense because it's very We're concrete. Yeah. Let's make it a fifty-point scale. Yeah. <laughs> Gradients. A gradient scale, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, motion to uh, receive uh, that item. That's not approval, right? No, receipt. It's a feedback, I think. Yeah. Uh, who's going to? Uh, Rod and uh, Rebecca, all in favor? That's carried. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I have now intermingled my agenda. There we go. We are moving on to the CEO update, everybody's favorite part of every meeting. Just some project updates. So the 60 mile construction project continues. If anybody's driven, driven up there, um, it seems like it's coming together beautifully. I am just flagging a potential risk to the board that we may be facing an additional possible two month delay um, related to glass and curtain wall production. Um, however, we are still being told that we can still expect to open by the end of Q3 2025. It just may not be the beginning of September. Um, but we'll keep you updated once the, the project plan gets updated. Um, but again, we are still seeing some, some impacts from some manufacturing and production. Uh, the new central design pro project is, is moving along nicely. Um, tomorrow ends the public engagement piece. Um, I haven't gotten the final, final numbers, but I do know that we received over 1,100 surveys completed, which is fantastic. We were very excited with that. Um, over 50 people attended the public open house that we held, and, and thank you to the board members who also attended. Um, yesterday, um, I attended uh, the teen engagement session, and we had 28, um, which for teens was a very high engagement, um, and they were very engaged. They had a lot of thoughts um, about what they would like to see in the library itself, as well as in uh, the teen space, and I have um, a picture um, coming up. Um, and then I will highlight that we're starting the Indigenous consultation um, on Monday. Um, so community leaders um, were, have been invited out to Crawford Lake, um, and we'll be doing those meetings in the longhouses up there. So just a couple uh, engagement photos. So um, the one at the top is, is an example of what we had given the teens, which was basically uh, a room um, along with all these different pieces and asked them to design their ideal library space. Uh, if you see very top underneath, um, they also wrote in hammocks and I think that blankets, hammocks and blankets were very, very popular. Um, so something for us to consider. Um, as well, it was interesting, ping pong, foosball, and air hockey were also very much in high demand. Um, and they wanted comfy furniture. Um, and when we asked about what feeling they wanted in their space, comfy was, was the number one. So um, we'll definitely take that to heart. We had five different groups. We had three do a teen space itself, and we had two groups do the whole library, um, similar to what we did at Staff Development Day, um, for those of you who were there for that. Uh, and so we'll, we'll consolidate all that information. We also had them write out a bunch of things because I wanted them to provide more information than comfy. Like, what, what, what makes a chair comfy to you? Because <laughs> um, I, I know what makes a chair comfortable to me, but I doubt that those are the same thing. Um, so really trying to get an understanding. And, and they really spoke to that the two main purposes that drive them to the library are to study and to socialize. Um, and so how can we create spaces that facilitate those two key activities that they're looking for? Um, and also serve to explain to us a little bit about why we struggle sometimes with programming um, and that we've seen success. Once they said it, we saw that they, we, we see a lot of success with our teen programs that are designed to create opportunities for them to connect and socialize and not necessarily ones where they're just coming in to a classroom um, um, style. So it, it made some connections for us that I thought were really, really interesting. Um, 
bottom picture is the uh, donor open house. Uh, and then um, just for those of you who didn't get a chance to attend, we had all these boards out um, and then people had sticky notes. And I will say by the end of the night, you could barely see what the board was, um, which was very, very exciting. So uh, Perkins and Will took all that information. Um, some of the, the key trends, and, and even the teens we heard this, was natural light, nature, greenery, um, were two, were, were the, were the, they kept being repeated. Outdoor spaces was, was another one. Um, they very much want a space um, that makes them feel lighter, I guess is probably the best way that I, that I can explain what, what I've heard from them. So, um, A report will be coming to the board in November, summarizing all of that from Perkins and Will, um, so stay tuned uh, for that. And then we'll definitely see some of those things play out um, through the design process as we move forward. So I did put uh, just a, an update on the newspaper digitization project. Uh, the RFP continues to sit with purchasing. Um, we did make a change to it about a month ago, um, and that seemed to have put it back into the back of the queue. Um, so I, I need to follow up with purchasing to get an update on timelines, because um, we would like to get that out sooner rather than later. Are the materials still sitting at wood, uh, wood, um, wood side? Yeah. yeah, and that's actually the update that we wanted to make to the RFP. So we did, we did put in an additional line that once the RFP is awarded, they are to take possession of the materials as soon as possible okay. um, to get them out of that space and hopefully get them into a, a, a safer a environment. Yeah. Um, and so that was the change we made, and then it seems to have put it to the back of the process of purchasing, so I've got to... And this, the, the materials are being monitored, I assume, right? So he's checking on them and making yeah. sure that the humidity is yeah. okay and everything? Yeah, and there is, um, we have like a moisture um, monitor down there, and the staff are quite anxious with having them there um, and sort of keeping a very close eye on them. Thank you. And I just added uh, in the Trafalgar Urban Core South Branch, um, more information will come on that as it kind of works out, um, but just an update that since it's been approved, the town continues to work on finalizing the agreement with, with Brant Haven. So once that gets finalized and we have a clear idea about what the path forward is, I'll bring an update. Um, so we did have a little bit of a flood on Monday night. Um, we are very grateful that uh, Arsenal, our cleaners, went in when they did. Um, it's unlikely that the water had been going for a long period of time before they arrived. Um, but if they had not arrived on Monday night, it would have gone all night. Um, so just some pictures of the different floors. Uh, we did reopen today. Um, however, uh, the fans are still going and are expected to go overnight tonight. And um, Service master will reassess tomorrow morning. Um, overall, damage is, is directly contained to carpet and, and the walls. There were no um, collections, uh, although that desk and chair, um, definitely the chair probably has to be replaced, uh, but relatively minor overall in comparison to the flood from almost a year and a half ago. So I have a, another comment here. Mm. Can we consider the purchase? Uh, I know that we're not going to be in that building for long term, but is it possible to consider the purchase of moisture detectors, uh, um, uh, flood detectors or something? Yeah. Because you're right. If somebody hadn't noticed it, like last time, yeah. um, it would have been much worse. No, agreed. And that is a conversation that we already had with facilities, and they are looking into... Um, what to put into place. I think we had a conversation about moisture meters or whether there's something they can attach to the different pipes, but it is really to a certain cell scale. Um, but I think we'd even talked about a, a moisture meter just to, it rises and I can notify somebody. Because um, in both cases of the floods, we just lucked out with people going into the space. So next week is public, uh, Ontario Public Library Week, um, which is always one of our favorite times of year. Um, the picture in there is from our staff development day. Uh, we made everybody go outside and, and take a group photo. Um, this year's theme is Libraries for Life, and so you'll, you'll likely see a lot of posts from public libraries across the country, um, or well, Ontario, really, I guess, although it is Library Month. Um, so you will see some from, from across the country um, related to the roles that, that libraries uh, play in, in all communities. Um, and then we'll, be, we'll also be doing a major card drive over the next week um, as well. Uh, and as part of that, we will be having a special talk with Olympian Maya Meshkalit, I'm going to go with, um, 
Maya, uh, we're really we're really excited about. I think that'll be a really well attended event uh, happening on Sunday. Um, she won silver at Paris, um, and Oakville is very much a rowing town. So. Uh, we have added a, a brand new online resource, CBC Corner. Um, feel free to check it out. It is uh, access to um, CBC-related TV shows, um, and so we're, we're excited to be able uh, to do that. Um, we are in the process of undergoing an interlibrary loan platform migration. Um, the interlibrary loan plat platform is run through the Ontario Library Service. It isn't our choice necessarily to go through a, a migration, um, and the whole province is doing it at, at one time. Um, I will say that the new public interface for the new system will be fantastic. Um, however, as you can imagine, it's every public library in the province moving to a new system, trying to adapt all individual processes to one. Um, so Julia and, and her team are working through all of that, um, but it will launch, it's supposed to launch, uh, the migration date, is that the launch date? That's the launch date, yeah, so November 12th, so that's coming up. And um, Oakville are heavy users of our interlibrary loan system, so um, it will be interesting to see how that is received. Um, so just continuing on with the Ontario Library Service, just a reminder that the, um, this says staff program, but there is also a board program. I sent it out through uh, my CEO update uh, either last month or the month before. Um, they do have a full board program. It's free to register. Um, you can go on to Ontario Library Service and register for it. If you need more information, uh, just reach out. Um, and then also, there are the board assembly meetings. So Bill has been our representative for the last number of years. Um, however, Ontario Library Service has made a shift. We still have to identify an individual, but all board members are now invited to attend board assembly meetings. Um, so anybody is welcome. Um, the board assembly meeting for us, which are libraries with a population higher than 75,000, um, is the 19th of November. Um, and I think they're, they're quite useful, if I remember correctly, Bill, the, the ones that you've attended you found quite interesting. Um, they're virtual. Yeah, yeah, because they include any library in the province. Okay. Um, we have added uh, multilingual uh, to the online catalog and the material handling system in order to, to try and create uh, better connection with our multilingual communities. Um, just a reminder to the board that I am out of the office next week. I'm attending the Canadian Urban uh, Library Council's fall meetings on Monday and Tuesday, as well as the Urban Library Council's Leadership Forum Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in Philadelphia. Um, there are a lot of topics that are being covered at both, uh, and I'll provide an update of those in November. And then a call out for the Santa Claus Parade. Thank you to those who joined us last year. So I'm just getting this in your calendar. We will be once again participating in the Santa Claus Parade uh, on November 17th. If you're interested in joining us, uh, I just ask that you let me know my November 6th, because then we have to confirm our numbers with the town um, in order to ensure our placement in the lineup. Um, knock on wood that it is the same weather as last year, because I think Avis and Bill can, can confirm it was a beautiful day. Um, and there were 10 rows deep in some of those um, in some of those streets, and it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and this year, last year we did the book bikes. This year we're bringing our new courier van, um, and we're gonna we're gonna deck it out. So we're looking forward to that. And I'm happy to take questions. At the last meeting, you talked about some board education opportunities. And yes, I, was I did. Wondering if there was any updates on that. Yeah, so I did have a number of you reach out about different opportunities, um, and it is on my agenda to get back to you um, and ask for those of you um, that were interested in particular ones what n intakes you were interested in, um, and hopefully work it out between the different individual ones for that. Um, not necessarily everybody's at the same time, but I think they do one two or three times a year, uh, looking at going into 2025, um, which ones would work best. But it is the intention that those who asked um, would be put into them, it's just figuring out what dates work best. Further questions? Comments? Seeing none, well, motion to receive the uh, update from the CEO. 
Thank you. And seconder, thank you. Several of them. So Bill and, uh, and uh, Meredith, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, we do not have any confidential discussion items. Is there a new business to come before the board tonight? Not seeing any, so we'll move on from there. Uh, our next date of and time of meeting is Thursday, the 21st of November, right here in Council Chambers at 7 p.m. Uh, unless there's any other business, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Rod, <laughs> Rod, wants, Rod wants to go home, but nobody else does, so we're stuck here in uh, purgatory. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much.